and welcome to Daily News Simplified, the answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today I am going to discuss Delhi edition dated 27th February 2018 of The Hindu. So let's begin. The first important article today appears on page 3 and it reads, Assam Arunachal can resolve border dispute. Now this article talks about two things. First, it talks about the meaningful resolution of old boundary disputes between Assam and Arunachal Pradesh. And secondly, it talks about the Nyokom Yulo Tribal Festival of Arunachal Pradesh. So the first topic discussed in this article is about the boundary dispute. So Arunachal Pradesh is facing boundary dispute along 792 square kilometer area which it shares with its neighboring state Assam. So during the time period 1971 to 73, the interstate boundary between the tri-junction of Bhutan, Assam and Arunachal Pradesh was demarcated. However, different tribes of Arunachal Pradesh exercised traditionally customary rights over some areas in the plains of Assam. Therefore, the claims for the adjustment of territory made by Arunachal Pradesh is based on historical facts and traditional rights of the people. So in order to resolve this dispute, the Supreme Court has constituted the Local Boundary Commission headed by Justice Sarun Chatterjee. So I hope till now you have understood about the boundary dispute between Arunachal Pradesh and Assam. Now let's understand a few historical facts about Arunachal Pradesh. So the Northeastern Areas Reorganization Act 1971 provided for the establishment of the states of Manipur and Tripura and also provided for the formation of the state of Meghalaya and the union territories of Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. And all these were created by reorganizing the state of Assam. However, Arunachal was granted statehood in February 1987. And as we have seen above, it shares its international boundary with countries like China, Myanmar and Bhutan. Now let's discuss the second thing that has been mentioned in this article that is about the Nyokom Yulo Tribal Festival of Arunachal Pradesh. So this festival is celebrated by the Nishi community of Arunachal Pradesh for good harvest and communal harmony. Here the word Nyok means land or earth and the word Kum means collectiveness or togetherness. So with the help of this article, we have understood about the border disputes between Assam and Arunachal Pradesh and the Nyokom Yulo festival. And this article is important from the prelims exam point of view. With this, we will move on to the next article. The next important article appears on page 7 and it reads, Supreme Court seeks details on overcrowded prisons. So this article says that the Supreme Court, while hearing a petition on inhuman conditions prevailing in the prisons in India, has asked the National Legal Services Authority to provide details and figures of prisons where occupancy rate is over 150% as on December 31, 2017. Also, Supreme Court has asked the NALSA director to provide information on the number of posts lying vacant in major prisons across the country. The Supreme Court also agreed to hear issues related to Standard Operating Procedure for the Under Trial Review Committees or UTRCs and the response of states and union territories. Also, these UTRCs have been constituted in every district to deliberate and recommend release of under trial prisoners. So these are the main points that are discussed in this article. Now we will discuss about two things from here. Firstly, we will talk about the prison reforms in India. And secondly, we will talk about the National Legal Services Authority or NALSA. So under the Prison Reforms of India, we should know that the Ministry of Home Affairs has approved the new Prison Manual 2016, which aims at uniformity in laws, rules and regulations governing the administration of prisons and the management of prisoners. This new prison manual has given special attention on the access to free legal services, needs of women prisoners, rights of the prisoners sentenced to death, modernization and computerization of prisons, and so on. Also, this prison manual provides guidelines to set up the Under Trial Review Committee or UTRCs in every district along with guidelines for early release of under trial prisoners, empanelment of competent lawyers for the under trials, 
improvement of living conditions in jails for women as well as an annual review of the implementation of model prison manual 2016 so i hope with the help of this discussion you have understood about the prison reforms in india now let us understand a few facts about nalsa so nalsa or the national legal services authority has been constituted under the legal services authorities act 1987 to monitor and evaluate the implementation of legal aid programs and to lead down policies and principles for making legal services available under the act and this legal services authority act 1987 was enacted by the parliament with the objective of establishing a nationwide uniform network to provide free and competent legal services to the weaker sections of the society on the basis of equal opportunity also the students should know that Article 39A of the Indian Constitution provides for equal justice and free legal aid to the poor and weaker sections of the society. So with the help of this article we have understood about the under trial review committees or UTRCs about the prison reforms in India about Nalsa and about article 39A of the Indian Constitution. This article is important from the prelims exam point of view. With this we will move on to the next article. The next important article appears on page 8 and it reads Z unlimited. Now this article talks about the proposal to abolish term limits on presidency in China and how this will impact president Xi's re-election in future and what may be its impact on India. So first let us try to understand what is the difference between democracy and communist way of election. So as we know that in a democracy the political representatives are elected directly by the citizens of the country but in the communist way of election which is also followed in china the president is elected by the national people's congress this national people's congress is china's highest state body and this congress is also elected indirectly so i hope till now you are able to understand the key difference between democracy and communist way of election so as of now in china the leader or the president changes after every 5 years so this 5 years is a term of presidency as of now but the chinese communist party has proposed to abolish this term of 5 years of presidency and as a result of this there are high chances that president z might remain in power for a longer period of time so over the years president z has played an important role in the development of china his leadership has raised china's profile in the global geopolitics next he has pursued a more assertive foreign policy for china an example of this is the china's one belt one road initiative and thirdly under his leadership the constitution of china was seen as limit to his stint in power So if this proposal of abolishing the term of presidency is approved which may lead to Xi Jinping's leadership as the president of China in future as well then this may take China back to the days of personality cult so i hope till now you have understood about what are the changes that have been proposed in china regarding the election of president and what will be its future impact on china now let us understand what will be the impact of Xi's leadership on India so as reflected by the article as well a powerful Xi is a reason for concern and wariness for India let's understand why firstly since he took office in 2013 India and China have seen three major face offs along the border and the most recent example of this is the Doklam issue secondly under the leadership of Xi Jinping China has undertaken more aggressive wooing of India's neighbors such as Maldives, Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bangladesh in order to increase the Chinese footprint in South Asia and this may not work well for India thirdly China is working on the China Pakistan economic corridor but this corridor has been opposed by India so all these points reflect that if Z becomes Chinese president again then this may escalate tensions between India and China also if this proposal is approved then in that case xi's leadership would represent the end of collective leadership in china and reemergence of a strong man politics so this proposed change is very critical for both china as well as india 
and from the exam point of view it is very important to understand what will be its impact on india this article forms a part of international relations in the upsc exam and the student should read it from the mains exam point of view with this we will move on to the next article the next important article appears on page 9 and it reads stemming the tide of agrarian distress now this article is pertaining to the agriculture distress or the farm distress in the country and the authors talk about all the positive developments that have been undertaken for the agriculture sector in the union budget 2018-19 and at the same time they also discuss what points have been missing in this year's budget pertaining to agriculture so let's discuss them one by one so as you all must be knowing that the first major reform that is announced in this year's union budget is to raise the minimum support price of kharif crops by 50% above the cost of production of those crops also the budget states that this msp should also be extended to those crops which require an estimation of cost of cultivation and remunerative prices now as we know that till now msp is provided only for 23 crops that is various other crops are still left out of the ambit of msp so now with this step more crops will come under the ambit of msp based on the estimation of their cost of cultivation however there are certain issues associated with this reform according to the authors the issue is that this msp which is calculated by the commission for agriculture cost and prices or cacp is calculated using different types of methodologies However there is a difference of opinion between the farmers and the CACP about this methodology of calculating MSP that is the farmers and the CACP do not agree on the same methodology for calculating this MSP and hence it becomes difficult to make an estimation of cost of cultivation which is agreeable to both the farmers as well as the CACP so according to the authors it has been suggested that the focus of the government should be towards helping the farmers with this issue of price volatility also as of now the agriculture sector in india is characterized by high input costs and low output price so the government should take appropriate steps to move from this current state of agriculture thirdly in order to ensure that the farmers get remunerative prices for their products the government should promote the price deficiency payment system so basically this price deficiency payment system says that if the price of an agriculture product in a mandi or an apmc falls below the msp then the difference between this market price and msp should be provided to the farmers through direct benefit transfers this measure has already been adopted in certain states such as haryana and madhya pradesh so with this discussion we understand stand that even though the government has taken a positive step by increasing the minimum support price but there are certain challenges associated with it and the government should also address those challenges in order to ensure effective implementation of this reform the second reform announced in the union budget this year is to develop and upgrade 22000 rural hearts to gramin agricultural markets and for this purpose an agri market infrastructure fund has also been created for developing and upgrading the marketing infrastructure however even though this is a step in the positive direction it will face certain challenges such as most of the farmers in the country which include small and marginal farmers sell their produce through village traders and as a result these small and marginal farmers are exploited by these village traders so there is a missing link here the government is trying to develop agricultural markets but the farmers do not use these agricultural markets at present so the suggestion provided by the authors here is that in order to link the farmers to these gramin agricultural markets the government should promote the creation of farmer producer organizations and self help groups these organizations tend to bring together all the small and marginal farmers so that they can actually utilize the agriculture markets which will help them to obtain better prices for their products 
The third major reform announced in the union budget is to increase the institutional credit for agriculture to rupees 11 lakh crores in the year 2018-19. As per the authors, this is a very welcome step and it will help to improve the purchasing power of farmers as well as provide a boost to agriculture investment. So till now we have discussed about all the major reforms that have been taken for agriculture in this year's union budget but the authors also state certain points that are missing in this year's budget. So a point that has been highlighted in economic survey 2017-18 as well is that 52% of the net sown area in the country is still unirrigated and rain fed. So this shows that more than half of the net sown area is still dependent upon monsoons but the union budget budget has not given due attention to this issue. So the author suggests that the government should create a location specific policy for irrigation with the identification of medium to major irrigation projects. Since it is clear that most of the agriculture depends upon monsoons which is highly risky in nature therefore the government should focus on strengthening its national agriculture insurance scheme. Also the government should promote technological interventions in order to improve irrigation. Another key component that is missing in this year's union budget is investment in agriculture research and development. The share of agriculture in the total R&D expenditure of the country is very low and this is a point that has been neglected in union budget this year. So steps should be taken to promote agriculture R&D. And lastly, the authors have suggested that the government should assure doable action plans for the farmers to avoid price and crop failures in future. So with the help of this article, we have understood about the major agriculture sector reforms, what are the issues associated with them and the suggestions to correct those issues and we have also discussed what agriculture reforms are missing in this year's union budget. So this topic forms a part of GS paper 3 and the students should read it from the mains exam point of view. With this we will move on to the next article. The next important article appears on page 10 and it reads Nostro accounts under scrutiny, CBI sends missive to 5 banks. Now this article is also pertaining to the Punjab National Bank and Nirav Modi case and we will not go into the details of the fraud but we will understand about this term that is Nostro accounts. So Nostro account refers to an account that one bank holds in foreign currency in another bank. So suppose any bank in India say PNB holds an account in any other bank of America and this bank is in American currency that is in dollars then this account will be called as a Nostro account. The main purpose of opening such Nostro accounts is to facilitate foreign exchange transactions and trade transactions. Another concept that is related to Nostro account is the Vostro account. Vostro account is basically the opposite of Nostro account. So Vostro account refers to those accounts in a bank that are held by other banks in that bank's home currency. So Nostro account and Vostro account refer to the same thing but they are from a different perspective. Let us take this PNB example only. For PNB, the account that it holds in the American bank in terms of dollar is a Nostro account. But if we look at that American bank's perspective, the account that PNB holds in that American bank in terms of dollars will be a Vostro account for that particular American bank. So for PNB this account is Nostro and for the American bank this account is a Vostro account. So I hope you understand about the two terms Nostro and Vostro account and the main difference between these two. And the main purpose of these accounts is to facilitate international transactions and to settle transactions on those accounts that hedge against exchange rate risk. Basically this means that because Nostro accounts are held in terms of foreign currency that is why they help in protecting the domestic bank against any exchange rate risk. So since this term is in the news it is very important for you to understand this from the prelims exam point of view. Also in today's paper two more important articles appear on page 7 and page 9. This article is pertaining to olive ridley turtles and this issue has been covered in detail in the DNS dated 23rd February 2018 and similarly the article on page 9 talks about WASH program and this also has been covered in detail in the DNS dated 15th February 2018. 
So to understand these two important topics, the student can refer to these two DNS videos. With this, we come to an end to today's newspaper discussion. Now let's move on to question for the day.